All right, so out here on this windy day, it's Ship Oaks Plantation. And, <clears throat> yeah, I'm down in Surrey County on the uh, south side of the James River. And uh, pretty neat. It looks like this commemorates Captain William Powell. He's the one who, uh, who founded, or I guess established, the area in 1619. Uh, died just four years later. And uh, also pretty neat, I saw his grave uh, over at Westover Plantation about a month ago. And I uh, didn't know who he was, but I remember them saying he was the, uh, uh, it was the third old, oldest uh, grave of an Englishman in the uh, United States. So, Carol Jones, they were owners of the house through the uh, 1800s. And yeah, so uh, before Captain uh, Powell uh, founded the area. This uh, area was uh, inhabited by Algonquin Indians and the uh, their chief, I guess, uh, I'm not sure what term they uh, called their leader. I think they called him a Wopon, a Wot, I don't know. But anyway, their leader, his name was Chopokes. And uh, so yeah, that's where the name uh, Chipokes Plantation came from. Looks like uh, some sort of little Great Myrtle Garden back here. A maze of some sort. Alright. A couple graves back here. Alright, yeah, grave of uh Victor Stewart and his wife uh Evelyn. The Stewarts were the uh last to uh live here on, on the property. They died in uh, 1969. Uh, they had no children, so they gave the uh, they gave the site over to the uh, state of Virginia, where it was turned the next year uh, into a uh, state park. up here is called a medallion the uh, molding up there above the uh, chandelier and something else interesting to know is this uh, th this uh, layout of the house is uh, called a American a four by four two identical rooms all on both sides and then um something else pretty interesting I found out is uh, back before the Civil War uh, before you had funeral homes um, most uh, funerals were held in the house in the uh, in the front room and uh, so when it was time to sell the house, a lot of people were kind of uh, spooked out and uh, leery about buying because they knew that front room was uh, used as a, uh, a funeral home. So they began calling it a uh, living room. So that's where that term came from. All right, so this room would be the garden parlor. And those two chairs underneath the window uh, were used by the uh, Rockefellers when they came to visit. And um, this would be the family room, AKA library. And um, those were two of the Stewart's favorite chairs there, that ripped up uh, leather chair and the, uh, the one there with the blue cushion. So just took the house tour and uh, could only go on the first floor uh, because of the uh, COVID restrictions. But uh, pr pretty neat, pretty neat house. Um, they said it was built in the uh, Italian eight style. And uh, this style of architecture apparently was uh, really popular during the uh, antebellum time period. All right, so this house used to be uh, pink at one time and then it was also white at, for a time. Uh, this uh, this wing over here it was an add-on and uh, there was originally a, a railing above that uh, portico right there and uh, yeah I thought that siding looked funny that's actually a uh, stucco on brick uh, made to look like sandstone all 
And I had heard somewhere at some time that uh, back in the olden days, they thought blue, the color blue, repelled insects. I don't know if well, that's why that's painted blue, but um, I had heard that at one time. Cool well over there. barn there and then uh that's that would be an apple barn and all right so i'm walking the road from the uh back there the joan stewart house to the uh, river house uh, on the other end and uh just to get some history on this area um so yeah like i said captain william powell uh uh, received a, uh, a charter to sell the land in 1619 and uh, he had actually lived in uh, <clears throat> Jamestown for about 10 years before that and uh, so yeah he, anyway he received the grant uh, moved over here and died four years later uh, so then the, uh, the area was passed on to his infant son uh, under the care of his uh, widowed mother and uh, his son uh, actually died in his 20s childless so the uh, plantation was sold off and uh, it was sold off and the person who bought it uh, then sold it uh, years later to uh, Governor William Berkeley and uh, yeah he was a big player in the uh, 16th century uh, colonial Virginia and uh, most famous as being part of uh, Bacon's Rebellion and uh, kind of a neat side note is that uh, just south of here is uh, Bacon's Castle, which was really uh, Arthur Allen II's uh, estate. And uh, Nathaniel Bacon's uh, followers ha had taken over the uh, mansion and kind of used it as a uh, garrison to uh, prepare for their uh, eventual attack on Jamestown, which is right across the river there. You probably can't tell, you can say with this little uh, GoPro. And um, yeah, so William Barclay actually had a toll road going from uh, here to Arthur Allen's estate. And uh, so the uh, about 500 followers uh, came down the uh, toll road. They actually uh, camped out here at Chip Hoaks and then eventually crossed the river to attack Jamestown. And uh, another neat side note I, I didn't know was that uh, Nathaniel Bacon was Governor Barclay's wife's nephew. So, yeah. So anyway, um, <clears throat> So yeah, so uh, William Barkley uh, owned the property. Uh, when he died, it was passed on to his wife. Then his wife uh, remarried to this guy named Philip Ludwell. So then the, uh, the property fell into the Ludwell uh, hands uh, for the next 140 years. And a little note about the uh, Ludwells, uh, Lucy Ludwell, uh, who was friends with uh, Thomas Jefferson. Uh, she married a guy named John Paradise and <clears throat> He was, uh, he was English and he was loyal to uh, Britain during the Revolutionary War. So they were, uh, so, uh, they were forced to sell the uh, plantation to uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia. But uh, luckily years later, with uh, Thomas Jefferson's help, they were able to, uh, to get the uh, area back. So, and uh, yeah, this would be a uh, slave house it's looking like. Yeah, slave quarters. All right, so, uh, yeah. And uh, like I said before, uh, yeah, these duplexes were really popular, these uh, slave houses. It seems like that's how they, they were all designed and uh, painted with that whitewash. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, after the uh, Ludwells, uh, a guy named Albert Jones uh, bought the property. And he was the first to actually live on the property uh, since Colonel William Powell back in the early 1600s. Uh, the, the Berkeleys and the Ludwells and everybody else, they just owned the land and just the, uh, the slaves and the, and the, uh, the overseers uh, li lived on the property at that time. And, um, all right, so where was I? It was, uh, yeah, Albert, Albert Jones owned the, uh, owned the property. So when he passed away, the house uh, stayed with the Jones, I believe, for one more generation. 
and then uh, it was eventually uh, bought by the uh, Stewarts. And oh, a, a note on, on Jones, he, he really, he's the one who really got this uh, going as a plantation. He, he doubled the size and uh, he was a really successful farmer. There's some chickens back there. And uh, I forgot what, uh, this might be uh, one of the overseer's houses. But, uh, and, and um, yeah, Jones, he was also uh, famous for, uh, he was a really successful brandy maker. So yeah, he was known for that. So yeah, he did well. So yeah, the uh, plantation stayed, stayed in their family for another generation and then it was sold to the uh, Stewarts, the uh, last ones to live there, live here. And um, as I said before, they uh, lived until 1969 when they sold it. They had no children, so they uh, sold the uh, plantation off to, uh, to the state of Virginia so it could be, uh, their stipulation was that it be used as a uh, park and the, uh, the farmland uh, still be, uh, be worked. <clears throat> cool, it's chickens, it looks like this might be a uh, private residence. Um, yeah, so, all right, I'm gonna continue on to the uh, river house. Okay, so coming up on the river house, and uh, yeah, Albert Jones moved in here in 1837, and uh, like I say, eventually built in and moved into uh, that Stewart uh, Jones house back there uh, sometime in the uh, late 1850s. So you see that they got the uh, English bond brickwork, bricks laying flat in a row of bricks uh, facing the opposite direction. And uh, inside, I see some artifacts back there on the table. Looks like it's a pretty unfurnished uh, root cellar with a sand floor. All right, back here is kind of a museum for farm equipment, but um, it's boarded up because of uh, COVID. So I'm here in the uh, in the visitor center. Badger looking thing down there. All right, here where the James River meets Cobham Bay, uh, Jamestown, just across the way to the left there, and just across the way there you've got Hogs Island. Okay, so Victor Stewart built this uh, Packard garage, this old 1941 car, I believe is stored in here. Yeah, I don't know how well this comes out. Okay, yeah, I see it. Pretty cool. So this would be the carriage house back here. And again, bummer, all these displays are closed because of COVID. Huh.
can't feel, feel them. 